Check this out. Every single one of these beers is non-alcoholic, which means it's made using barley and it contains less than 0.5% ABV. We've got everything from IPAs to sours, and this market is only expanding thanks to dry January and sober October. But I found another reason to stock up on near beer. These suckers are perfect for brew days. It feels good to drink a few beers and still be clear headed. And as it turns out, brewing non alcoholic beer is great. It's a cheap, super fast, beginner friendly style to brew, and this definitely won't be my last one. Now, let's make some beer. For this beer, I'm starting with some reverse osmosis water and I'm targeting a water profile with a ton of sulfate, like 300 parts per million. This beer is going to be super hoppy and super refreshing. But how the f do you make alcohol free beer? Turns out there are a few ways. The most common way is by evaporating alcohol from uncarbonated, regular beer, which can obviously be done using heat or you can use vacuum pressure. Or you can use filtration to remove the alcohol and water from regular beer, essentially making beer extract and then rehydrating that with water. And you can also find special yeast that just doesn't produce ethanol during fermentation. But the easiest way for me to dip my toes into this style is often referred to as nanny state after this beer from BrewDog. Basically, this method involves a tiny grain bill that's full of low diastatic specialty grains. And lucky for us, BrewDog shared the recipe on their website. Today, I'm using less than two pounds of grain in this six gallon batch, and I'll counter the thin body with a massive amount of hops. Let's get it going. Not much to mash in on this one, and since we're not exactly concerned with efficiency or conversion, I say we aim for a 30 minute mash. But before we start that timer, here's six grams of Centennial. All right, time to yank these grains and get our boil started. We're up to a full boil and it's time for some more hops. The recipe describes the timing in a weird way here, but I decided to go with 12 and a half grams of Amarillo, 12 and a half of Centennial and seven and a half of Simcoe. We've got 30 minutes to go.
With 10 minutes left in the boil, I get this nice notification that it's time to sanitize the chiller, so I'll flip the valves and turn on the pump. And just like that, our boil is complete and it's time for our last hop addition. Now, I'll just let this spin as long as I can stand it and we'll get ready for fermentation. I pitched Imperial Dry Hop and I was pretty stoked to actually see some signs of fermentation with how little fermentable sugar was in the wort. Nonetheless, I let it do its thing for a week and dry hopped it on the seventh day. Now, let's see how it turned out. Brewdog calls this beer a hoppy ale, I call it an IPA, but either way I'm just looking for a beer that doesn't stand out as a non-alcoholic beer. It's an old school copper brown color with a new school haze and a massive aroma with over 30 grams of hops per gallon. The Cascade stands out to me and makes me reminisce about the days when it topped the charts and Sierra Nevada Pale Ale reigned supreme, and I'm really digging these flavors. It's actually pretty malty, like toasty and a little sweet. But holy shit, this thing is hoppy. But those hops offset the sweetness and it finishes nice and dry. This is a great beer. I don't say this often, but you need to make this beer. It's cheap, fast, simple, and still super fun and interesting to brew. And it just might be the perfect beer for future brew days. Let me know in the comments what you think about non-alcoholic beer and check out the description for links to my references. My name's Dan, this is Hops and Gnarly. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.